Joey, I, I do want to. I, re- I want to reflect on your time in Cincinnati for for a little bit. You spent 17 years there in Cincy in the big leagues. W- what's your favorite part of that city itself? How much does that place mean to you? Favorite part of that city. It's it's, it's odd when halfway through, two thirds of the way through, by the by the end, you know people by name, <laughs> or you, you're, and I'm speaking about fans, seeing people on the street, going into a coffee shop or a restaurant, mm-hmm. and people not even looking at you with stardom awe, like like I've like you can sometimes see with with famous athletes. You see a superstar basketball player, you see a an NHL player or a dancer or an actor, whatever, whatever. But for them to react in a, oh, that's my neighbor, Joey. Oh, he's in the community all the time, Joey. Oh, hey, Joey, good to see you again. Very casual. It's a, it, it was a neighborly, we're in the same community. I know you like a friend reaction almost all yeah. the time. Almost all the time. Wow. It's not, it's, it wasn't fireworks and, and, and photo shoot sort of thing. It was very you know, handshake and hello, how you doing? Oh, you know, so and so. Oh, I saw you in the community. Da da da. That that's probably the thing that stands out to me the most. And I, I'll, you know, I'll miss it. Of course, I'll miss yeah. it because I was, I was accepted for who who I am. I was treated great. It was the sort of thing where, like, if I had like made a public request, like people are gonna take care of it. Like, mm-hmm. hey, does anybody can anybody help me with this? And people would have looked at me as Joey, not you know, just, just Joey in the neighborhood. So that losing, losing that or moving on from that or, or, or putting that in the past, I'll I'll look back with with great fondness. I do want to ask you about this, this coming season. There is a lot of hype for the Reds and it's a team you were around um, for obviously this current group. You were there last year and were there when they, the the page kind of turned a little bit. They're exciting. What what do you think the ceiling is for this Reds current team? Well, the lineup is long, and starting staff is potentially long. I mean, Hunter Green has a chance to be among the better pitchers in the game. Every one of the guys, two through five, has a chance to be a standout pitcher. The lineup, as I mentioned before, is long, but it's also quite athletic. Lots of stolen bases, lots of taking the extra base, guys that can play multiple positions. You know, you've got Matt McLean, who can play most infield positions, save first base, but he could definitely play that also. Ellie De La Cruz, who could play all the infield positions and center field. He could pitch, you know. So they're they're the sort of a team that has potential to be competitive not only right now but also in the long run, and they have a, a most importantly not maybe not most importantly I mean you can have chaos in the clubhouse and still get the job done you could have toxic a toxic toxic atmosphere in the clubhouse as far as butting heads and and still be successful, but they get along great. They're smart. They're wanting to work. They're wanting to get better collectively. And they have the chance to ch- – it's the sort of team that has a chance to be good for five, eight years, maybe yeah. long sort of thing. So they're all young. They're all quite athletic. They're all high-ceiling types. The Reds are in a fantastic place. If I just had – um, I just had Jonathan India is, is coming on the show and, and talk to him and – Man, that guy, that guy loves you and gives you a lot of credit for uh, him being like a, a leader in that locker room and uh, just told some good stories and uh, about how um, just really gravitated towards you and, and learned a lot about being a leader from you. So it's cool to hear him talk about you in that way. And I'm sure um, you, you might, might feel the same way about him. John and I were locker mates. John and I were played side by side on the field mm-hmm. together. We had little handshakes and little inside jokes, lots of little inside jokes. We had, in some ways, a similar style of play in that we prided ourselves on getting on base by any means necessary. 
we pride ourselves in playing even when hurt. And John is an achiever, a high achiever type. So to me, I, I loved playing with him. I had I have a great deal of respect for him. And the team, I, I will say this. I've always been, I've always misunderstood the whole leadership thing in, in baseball in particular. Now, John has, I'm going to show you by example, I'm going to play through pain. I'm going to play by any means necessary. I'm going to do the gritty thing. He also has a strong ability to communicate, which is, I think, helpful. I suppose you would classify as as a leadership leader, yeah. leadership characteristic. But in in baseball, in my opinion, it's just a group of individual con you know hired contract uh, contractors like hired guns mercenaries, yeah. all doing it together. And rare is there a coordinated effort. You know, it's not like the shortstop has to time up the throw a la quarterback to wide receiver to, to a first baseman sort yep. of thing. The really the only tandem that matters is the catcher and the pitcher. Mm -hmm. And you can sense that camaraderie amongst, amongst the catching crew and the, and the pitching crew. But in general, we, we were on the position player side, we're highly individualized. And so the idea that someone's going to lead me to be better at my job in general, in baseball, I, I bristle at that. I just, yeah. I just, I've never reacted to somebody pushing me or motivating me or not a single time in my entire professional career has somebody you know, made me feel like I play that much better. I've had some yeah. guys that have inspired me through action, but very rarely, uh, Scott Rowland is a perfect example. Ken Griffey Jr. is a great example. I could give you many more, but very rarely is there someone through their words can they boost me up or motivate me yeah. to play harder and work harder? To me, it's you're 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 selling yourself short if you need somebody else to do that. I suppose yeah. not everybody's me or not everybody's, but I've heard that from a lot of accomplished players that the idea of a, a leader is an odd thing to to hand to a player.